Welcome back my DIY nomads. I'm out here in between some really severe showers that are having today. Oh look, classic, as I say that the sun comes out. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna try and get all the outdoor bits of this video done now before I absolutely get soaked in a second because I can see a really dark rain cloud coming. But as you could probably tell from the title of this video, uh, I'm redoing and I'm re-evaluating everything about my 12 volt system. And I want to explain a couple of things and run over a couple of things that I guess I probably, well, I did miss in my last video. So just before we get into this, please make sure you leave a like, leave a comment, and also most importantly, subscribe. Hit that red subscribe button now to keep up with all the all cool videos that are coming out in the near future. Um, and this year in particular is going to be bad ass in regards adventures and cool trips so make sure you hit that subscribe button and uh, yeah follow along lastly just before we get started I just want to clarify I am not a qualified electrician so don't take my word for gospel this is my system um, and if you'd like to copy my system feel free to um, I would recommend that if you want to feel properly safe get a qualified electrician just check over your system afterwards um, but I, I really just like to try and do these things myself and learn along the way. I have tried to be an, a, as safe as possible. But the reason I trust this system and the way I've set it up is because I did this in my transit custom and it worked so well for me. I never had any issues and, um, and I'm just constantly learning anyway. And yeah, so I, I trust this now. I trust myself. Um, but yeah, please remember I'm not a qualified electrician, electrician so please take all of this advice at your own warning. So as in the previous video, um, nothing's really changed in regards to the system, but I have moved everything around. So now I've, got, I've still got my battery there, but my inverter has now moved to this wall and I have rotated it 180 degrees to make sure that the cooling fan is on top. Um, my SeaTech is now in the corner and this is going to allow me to build a box all the way around the battery and everything, which means that I can put so, some form of decondensate or something to keep the condensation out of the box so that all the terminals stay dry, everything just stays nice and dry inside that area. And uh, yeah, I don't need to worry about any rain dripping off the top here or anything like that. So even if it's bad weather, I can throw all my wet gear in the back and my electricity is fine. So my electric system is fine, should I say. But yeah, so I'll quickly go everything again. This is my 220 amp power 12 volt glass mat, AGM glass mat fiber um, battery. I, I chose this because I guess I got, you know, pulled into the fact that I like the, the ability of this, I guess, more apparently more advanced technology. Um, but I have heard from some of my subscribers that they've got some lead acid batteries that have lasted absolutely yonks with just the correct maintenance but this is a maintenance free battery it means that it's completely sealed so this is going to do its job and then i'm going to have to chuck it out the other end but the the thing i did like about the glass mat fiber is its sort of ability i think it's really around it is probably pretty good at handling um sort of van trips and like vibration from vehicles uh, you can also mount it in different orientations without it affecting the battery at all so this is my power source um, this is hooked up via my SeaTech D250S to up there to on the roof of the van 200 watts of solar beauty uh, from my two solar panels that I've got there and this 220 amp hour tied in with that even in the British winter I have not had any problems with power consumption that is absolutely fine so in fact in the summer I'm probably gonna have way too much power um, but hopefully my CT my SeaTech D250 SA should handle that um, there, there's someone has told me that apparently with too much Sun these things don't really like too much Sun via a solar panel because they generate a lot of heat but this apparently has thermal cutoff abilities and everything built into it so I'm hoping that the tech is now advanced and up-to-date that they they can handle all that um, so we've got power we've got my DC to DC charger which I will explain in a second now if you want 240 volt power you do need to get an inverter like this I have now from the previous video added a 150 amp hour trip fuse that uh, will trip I chose that amperage based on a chart I mean I have done my research it wasn't just from that one source but um, 150 amp fuse seems correct for up to 1500 watts of power in this system. I'm never ever ever going to surge to 3000 watt 
Uh, I just don't see the need. I haven't got anything like a microwave or an actual like like powerful kettle inside of my van, so I just don't need it. So really simply, battery, inverter, and the inverter hooks in via the positive cable that comes from the battery through the fuse, top terminal, negative, from the battery, other terminal. Uh, obviously they are color coded but really make sure you don't reverse the polarity because it will just destroy your inverter then in the bottom i've got my two power plugs and i can put extension leads that take that into the van and i can use that then and i've got one ethernet cable that on this one acts as an on off switch that i've got inside the van to turn this on and off from in there and it gives me my battery indicator to show you how much power is left in my beast oh i hope you're following along now to power everything 12 volt i've got my two fuse boxes so power comes off the battery to my fuse boxes versus uh, through these like wiring looms and through these other cables and this powers like my fridge um it powers my 12 volt control panel everything else like that and obviously everything's fused so that if there's a surge it it'll trip those and everything's safe um these then lead into the van and i'll show you here to my 12 volt control panel and that you can see there another voltage reading uh, and this will power everything called my uh is it the lights there you go and everything else i don't think these two are actually hooked up to anything at the moment and then down here behind there is my fridge and that's also hooked up to the battery via those cables that i just showed you but other than my inverter if you want to power other gadgets up front um I have already got my control panel that I will link in the description below and that will show you like basically the control panel that I got from Rain Automotive and how uh, it's wired together. Um, but yeah, that's the power from the battery through the fuses into the van to my control panels and other 12 volt gadgets. Now the reason I like my setup is really mainly revolving around this, the SeaTech D250SA. Um, it, is just it, it sort of like takes a lot of the hassle out of a uh, wiring up sort of a DC to DC charge setup that handles all my solar and everything like that and um, so really here's my two power cables from the uh, solar panels uh, this is my positive via a 30 amp fuse and the positive of the solar panel is going to this terminal here the negative of the solar is going to this terminal here the positive from my smart alternator or alternator in general basically really the the starter battery of my van uh, is going to here and then the positive that is charging via a 30 amp fuse again that is charging my leisure battery is going to my leisure battery of course and then this negative is also going to the negative terminal on my leisure battery positive in from the solar positive in from the starter battery or smart alternator negative from the solar panel negative to my leisure battery positive to my um, leisure battery via a 30 amp fuse and remember the right amperage of fuse from your solar panel which for me is 30. now what i didn't show in the last video is that afterwards i'd wired up these two cables on the SeaTech, these are to help when you have a smart alternator you've got a black cable and a red cable the black just goes to where your earthing point is and the positive runs to the front and I've routed the cable under all the trim up into one of the fuse boxes on my van and in here I've got a piggybacking fuse uh, strapped into what was there a 10 amp fuse port and this allows the SeaTech D250SA to work with a smart alternator and regulate itself when you turn on the ignition. So that's really the quick run over of my electrical system. Some other important things to think about is that um, I've tried my best to use a higher strand or sort of like more cores in the wire. So basically inside, instead of having just one solid metal wire, you have like more, like loads more thinner strands because this makes the cable a lot more flexible and that will deal better with the vibration. I've also tied down the cables everywhere I can and I'm going to do even more after this video just to make sure that all of the cables are locked down and that will prevent damage through vibration. Um, any sharp edges where any cables are going to be coming into contact with you need to just make sure that they, they're not rubbing or anything like that because that will cut through the wire and create shorts. And something else to uh, think about is that you need an earthing point 
Uh, on here I've got it going through this really big black cable that I might shorten because it's a bit excessive. This is going to my earthing point here. And the way you can also improve that point is when you, if you find your point that is basically connected to the chassis, um, make sure you get rid of all the paint and you can even use, I would recommend use electrical grease as well to make sure the connection's butte. Just something to really think about is if you are going to do this, set your own system up and do it all yourself, anything you power from your battery, just remember to check all of the voltages, check the amperages needed, and make sure you fuse everything you possibly can to stop any shorts or anything like that happening, or any, um, like, if you, if, let's say if you didn't fuse something and there was a surge in power, that object that you're using could you know, catch on fire because of the surge of power and there's no fuse to stop the power just constantly going into it. So make sure you fuse everything where you can. So as usual, I probably ran through that incredibly quickly because I know that I speak really fast um, and I've probably missed a couple things. So right now I'm gonna overlay a wiring diagram of what my system is and how it's set up. Now with the system that I have, um, all the manuals and everything that I had were either pre-wired or they told me in the manual what gauge of wire and what size of fuse that I needed in my setup. So that's why I haven't included that in this wiring diagram. It changes depending on how far away that appliance is from the DC to DC charger or the uh, battery and therefore you'll probably need a thicker wire. Um, so just refer to the manuals and hopefully they'll give you the correct information. And then when you go to buy the wire needed, make sure you check that it can carry the correct amount of amperages for your setup. But yeah, I hope that wiring diagram was also really useful uh, and helped answer a few more questions if you're a bit uneasy. Remember guys, treat your electric system with respect. It is a serious part of the van and if done improperly, could cause um, serious damage or injury. Um, so really, really do treat it with as much respect as possible. And where and if you can get it checked up or even installed by a proper electrician so until next time hit that subscribe button hit that like button and i'll see you diy nomads really soon